So that is um, a big way to start the show, isn't it? Okay, by the way, the watch I have on is coming up too. You're gonna definitely wanna know about that. And um, that one sold out last time, it's just back but like just a little bit. Okay, freeform lapis here. Okay, freeform lapis, and I want to tell you, you, you were at Tucson, right? Yes, it was fantastic. Do, you, you didn't see a lot of lapis this year. No, I didn't. I, you know, I saw one guy. Um, I, I have to tell you, right, you know, you can kind of predict. That's that's the thing about Tucson. Um, you can, um, I also got to tell you that uh, that you're going to love us on turquoise this year. You are. <laughs> but, but in Tucson, you just didn't see it. When, you know, you have to understand, when you don't, when you don't see material in Tucson, yeah, it, that that is the, the it's really telling you something about that rough material. This year, very little lapis uh, and very little uh, uh, actually lapis vendors that were selling the rough material. When I go to Tucson, I don't buy any finished goods. Okay, I, I don't go there. You know, you can get finished product, you can get finished stones that are cut. That's what a lot of people go for. We only go to buy the rough materials because we work from the ground up, from from the right from the miner. A lot of the miners actually um, at Tucson. Uh, it's a it's a year process where they mine for us and then they come and visit us just in Tucson. That's the one time in the year in some cases that I even see these guys. A lot of them you got to understand they don't have phones. They don't they don't have um, right. they have any they have no, they don't have any computer. There's no way to get in touch with them. The only time you know we we actually a lot of these people. Uh, we set up the next meeting uh, for Tucson the next year. That's and that's what's really fun about Tucson. Lapis, though, here again, this is okay, and this is all natural lapis lazuli. It comes out of the Hindu Kush region of Afghanistan. I love the contemporary cuts mm -hmm. on this. And here again, we're working right from Ooh. the rough. Ooh, thank okay, you. The, yeah, and, look at that. And, and I think that that is so important uh, because it really, one of the things that it allows us to do is we work mine direct. So it, there are some, some cases where maybe I have one person in between us like a consolidator, sure. right? But um, uh, overall, uh, we try to work directly with the miners. This allows us to give you a really high quality product, but also control the quality and the price um, that you're getting it. Uh, and lapis is one of those things where I can't go into the Hindu Kush region no, of cannot. Afghanistan. No one will well, let you. I could. We but don't want you to do you, that. I don't think you can even go in with a SEAL team, okay? Yeah, right, <laughs> so, right. but, but it's being mined, okay? It's being mined uh, much as it's been, and it's been documented that these same mines, these same deposits have been being mined for over 5,000 years. Uh, where, you know, like uh, Marco Polo, when he went to China on his trip, right. came back to Italy, one of the things that he brought was uh, um, la uh, lapis from Afghanistan that came from these same deposits. Now, there are regions where there have larger mines, but for the most part, all the jewelry grade is all mined uh, in these little, little deposits that are owned by, um, uh, like, the local villagers. Yeah, And families. what they do is they go up. It's all done by hand. Um, there is no infrastructure. Running water is if they got a stream that's running. Wow. <laughs> they, they don't, uh, it, it's very, very primitive. Um, uh, my friends that, that go in and, and get the, the lapis rough for us, they, they tell me it's like going back into time. I've actually seen pictures and stuff. They don't even have roads. They don't even have cars. It's all done. They either uh, bring it in backpacks or on mules or on horses in panniards. That's how, that's how all this material gets moved down the mountain. What's a panniard? A panniard is like a saddlebag for oh, right. like a pack horse, okay. right? Right. So, and that's why... Um, if you notice, like, you saw me picking our, our, you know, we had that bump shot of me picking our lapis rough. Yeah. Well, what we do is we'll go through, say, five, ten tons of lapis, and, and out of that, we'll get five or ten percent of that will be the quality that, that we will use for our jewelry. The rest of it, we wholesale below cost and get rid of it and goes to other bead makers or it goes to people doing carvings or whatever. If you notice, though, you don't really see... The, probably the, the biggest piece of lapis that you'll really see, now they do have, uh, in some cases, uh, where, you know, where they've gotten larger pieces, but usually the standard lapis is the size of a bowling ball down to the size of a golf ball. Yeah. And the reason is for that is they bring it down on the horses or the oh, mules so in those manners. So yeah. they can't take huge chunks. I, I have seen a picture where they, um, they have like a stretcher, 
between two mules, and then they had a big piece <laughs> of lapis on, on it. But but uh, but for the most part, you know, lapis in here again, it's getting harder and harder to get, rare and rare. So you know, if you if you want to la add lapis to your collection, now's a, a pretty good off. time to do it. Fifty dollars yeah. off for our event and five.